In this video on Logic's MIDI transformer window, we're going to take a look at our ability to exchange parameter values. And this is done with our, as some people call them swap bars. You can click on this little blue dot and you can see we get all sorts of routing possibilities. And you know, heck, there you go. Looks like a spider web. You can get these back to the original straight up and down their default positions, basically three times rotates them through the entire cycle. So as their default position is, they just route things straight through. And therefore, channel is affecting channel. Data byte 1 is affecting data byte 1. Data byte 2 is affecting data byte 2. Let's go ahead and change our status to notes here. And then we'll give names and something we can maybe work a little easier with. And that is pitch and velocity for our data byte 1 and data byte 2 columns, respectively. Let's go through this process right here. Now I have a selection condition right now. I'm saying everything on MIDI channel 3, which is already selected over here, is going to be fixed to MIDI channel 1. So if I go ahead and operate on it, you'll see that MIDI channel 3 became MIDI channel 1. Let me do an undo. And back to 3, a redo, back to 1. You get the drill. Let's do something else. Let's move this and say, you know what? That MIDI channel is going to affect pitch. To be understood, it will not, in fact, let me get back to MIDI channel three here, good. It will not be affected by this value. This is only a selection value. What it's going to do its operation on is your column here and the values within that column, depending on which, whether you're using channel or data byte one or data byte two. So two things are going to happen. We will get all the MIDI channel threes to go to MIDI channel one, and we will get our pitch to be affected by the MIDI channel. So let me go ahead and show you. Since I already selected, I'll operate. And now you see the MIDI channel one, and it's D minus two. By the way, to be clear, this process is independent. It happens before our values down here in the operations area. All right, so why did we get a D minus two? Because in MIDI parlance, you can express notes as numerical values. C3, for example, is 60. The lowest note logic recognizes C minus 2 has a value of 0. Now, the MIDI channel can't do 0, so we won't get that. So we are a whole step above our lowest note. Let me just show you what the lowest note is. Going over here to make this active here, and I can scroll down there as C minus 2. I can go up a whole step or two half step to D minus 2, and that's the influence that my MIDI channel 3 had on this. Let me do an undo. A couple of these to get back. Now you're going to see the MIDI channel 1, MIDI channel 2, and MIDI channel 3 all be snapped to MIDI channel 1 and affect our pitch based on this value right here. Let me operate. So 1 became C minus 2. What used to be our MIDI channel 2 is C sharp minus 2, a half step above. And here we have D2 with what used to be our MIDI channel 3. And undo to get us back to that look. You can do a lot of different things with this. You can choose to process after the fact. Let's go ahead and add, say, two semitones to this. And we'll go ahead and operate. And the C minus two is now a D minus two. A lot of choices there. Let's do an undo, get us back to where we were. It's possible, say, you could have velocity affect pitch. Let's go in here now and yeah, let's get neutral here, neutral there. And say, I want my velocity to affect pitch. As I have no selections defined, I've defined them manually here. So you're going to see, in fact, let's just do the uh, first two here. Let me click in the background. This will be very easy. And hit operate. And you'll see it respects the MIDI values. We can't get a zero here, so we can't get C minus two. But the value of one is a C sharp minus two. Here's a D two. Here's a D minus two up a whole step or two semitones. Let's go over here where I have my pitches already set to the value of 60 which is middle C or C3. And you can see by operating, I get that. Let's do a couple of undos. And let's swap. Let's swap pitch and velocity, if I can get these to work. So now pitch becomes velocity, velocity becomes pitch. And this will be easier to see. Let's do six of them here. And then let me go ahead and operate. We'll talk about what we see here. Let me start with MIDI channel three and do an undo. 60 was a value of C3, we said that. Now G2 has a value. Numerically, that value is 55. So let's see if it respects that. Let's do a redo. And sure enough, we see C3, but we also see the value 55. That's its MIDI value number. And the velocity number 60, which is C3, works like that. Let's take a look at our very first one over here. Let me do an undo. 
We have a C2, and that is going to be four octaves or 48 semitones above C minus two and a value of one. Actually, we can't get C minus two, but we can get C sharp minus two. Let me do a redo 48, which is four octaves above, and we have C minus two. Again, this is a value of one. This is a pitch of C2, an undo to get us back to where we were. So that's how swapping the values works. So this can get as complicated as you'd like, or you may never even need to use the process. But at least hopefully now at this point, you will understand the process. So that's all I'd like to cover at this time. As always, thanks for watching. Hope this gives you a tip or trick or two on dealing with exchanging parameter values and hope to catch you on the next one.